Hey, and welcome to part 6 of my Dark Souls Remastered Boss Weapons Only run. Uh, so this episode's gonna be a little different because the audio I initially recorded uh, turned out super scuffed to the point that it was basically unusable. So all my commentary for this episode is recorded after the fact and read from a script. So leave a comment letting me know what you think of this format, if you like it, if you hate it, uh, whatever. Anyways, with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the video. I know I said at the end of the last episode that we would start collecting great souls, but we're actually going to spend this episode upgrading our arsenal before we start on that. I'll start by getting a plus 10 Cestus and a plus 10 Club, and turning them into the Dragon Bone Fist and Smo's Hammer respectively. Some 20,000 odd souls later, I realized that the Dragon Bone Fist is kinda shit. And Smo's hammer is absurdly heavy. It actually has the highest strength requirement in the game, requiring 39 strength to even wield two-handed. So for now, I'm gonna keep using Quaylog's Fury Sword. With that done, I head down to Darkroot Garden to go murder a dog and a butterfly, then turn their souls into instruments of death. Butterfly first. I feel like this fight is either incredibly annoying or completely trivial depending on your build. Luckily my damage was good enough that I was able to kill it the first time it sat its stupid glowing ass on the bridge, which put the fight firmly in the trivial category. It also marks the first time I've been able to kill a boss on the first try since the Asylum Demon, and after how hard ONS is, it made for a nice little morale boost with an easy win. Now on to the dog. Since I went ahead and bought the Crest of Artorias when I first got to Andre, there's nothing stopping me from the most emotionally damaging fight in the entire Dark Souls trilogy. Great. But first, I've got to get through the tree-hugging, cat-worshipping death squad that hangs out down here. I died once after getting trapped in a corner, tried to find the cat, and joined the death squad, got lost, ran in a giant circle, then said fuck it and just ran past everything to the boss arena. Then aside from some impressively awful timing on my part for the first little bit of the fight, Sif ended up being a lot easier than I was expecting. I think this is because I usually fight the bosses in Dark Root Garden much earlier in the game. I actually killed her so quickly that I didn't even see her limp, so I only felt guilty instead of very guilty, which I'm counting as another win.
And just like that, I've got two more boss souls to forge into weapons. I'll turn the butterfly soul into the butterfly's horn, a spear that deals pure magic damage, which I conveniently already have the base weapon for. The lightning spear I picked up way back in Sen's Fortress can be demodified into a plus 10 spear. Then I'll turn Sif's soul into the not cursed version of Artorius's great sword by modifying a plus 10 broken straight sword, which means it'll deal magic, physical, and divine damage, making it perfect for when I go down to the bone zone to deal with Pinwheel and Nito. Of course, I don't actually have the stats to use either of these quite yet, but we'll work on that next time when we go to the Duke's archives and kill Seath. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.